Hello and welcome to another TV Central podcast. I'm Aaron Ryan. The 2012 rating season is firing up and while most of the attention has been afforded to the commercial offerings, it's a beautifully shot and executed drama on the ABC that is having this reviewer hooked. The series is called The Straits and it airs Thursday nights from February 2nd at 8.30pm on ABC One. One of the main stars is Aaron Faso whom I remember quite fondly from East West 101. Aaron, thanks for joining me here at TV Central. Thank you very much, Aaron. It's a pleasure to be on your show. No worries. Hey, um, look, before we get to the storyline, one of the biggest uh, draw cards for the series is the exotic and beautiful uh, settings. Tell us where filming took place and a bit about its history and I guess um, even its personality. Basically, um, the uh, we, we shot or we filmed... Um, in and around the Cairns region, yep. and also um, back up in the Torres Straits. Um, and basically, um, you know, the, the premise for, for the Straits is um, this uh, family who were part European, part Torres Strait, who um, basically um, uh, have created this or have this um, extremely powerful empire. And um, although they have a lot of front businesses or legitimate businesses, their core business is uh, the uh, smuggling of, um, you know, illegal contrabands, thus being um, guns, drugs and people smuggling from time to time. And the uh, backdrop was, you know, the beautiful and exquisite, uh, you know, regions of far north Queensland and the Torres Straits. Mm. Well, you, you're sort of uh, mentioning there, in essence, sort of what the series is. It's... it's... I found it really quite hard to to narrow it down because yes, it's a, it's a series about family that transports drugs and weapons into the country, and so some might sort of compare it to Underbelly. However, it uh, also has some quite gentle and meaningful family tone to it as as well. I guess it, at times I found it to be quite humorous and also, you know, on the other end, violent and quite edge of your seat. Can can this show actually be defined about what it what it is exactly? Well, at the end of the day, Aaron, it's it's essentially you know the, the straits is a lot of things. I mean, it's a, you know the, the one one hand it's about um, you know uh, the uh, exploitation of a porous um, part of the country or or our borders, but our, our particular region of of our you know Australian border, so to speak, in between you know Papua New Guinea and and, and the Australian border. Then on the other hand, it's about you know. Um, you know the, the, the violence and 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 the underworld and, and the crime world that um, exists, but essentially what the Straits is about it's about a family, um, and and that's the heart of it uh, and the dynamics how uh, these relationships work or how they um, I guess relate to one one to another uh, and in what kicks um, this series off is uh, the patriarch of the family, Harry Montebello, played by Brian Cox, basically announces his succession story, which is um, quite different um, in retrospect to what the matriarch, his wife, expected, and thus also uh, his, his, his children as well. Mm. And that basically sets a domino effect which runs through a through line, and it is outplayed throughout the uh, 10 episodes. But basically, at the end of the day, the heart of this series, it's basically about a family that happened to be in this crime world. But, you know, these guys could have been selling tires for all we knew. Um, mm. At the end, the end of it, it's about, it's about a family, and it's about the family dynamics. And that's a universal, basically, subject matter. I mean, because everybody comes from a family, and everyone will be able to relate to these characters and invest in these characters in regards to this point of view. On, on the other uh, end of the scale, there's some very violent and quite scary situations that happen, which I guess is, uh, you know, pass and parcel with the family of business in drugs and weapons. I'm thinking about a very icky moment in the opening episode involving jellyfish. Uh, what was it like filming uh, these sort of tense scenes? Well, you know, I mean, it, it's, you know, this particular world, it, it I mean, we've seen this genre or this subject matter done extremely well. Um, and there's many great 
um, examples of you know crime drama uh, films to, to, to television series. I mean, you, you just have to look at The Godfather, you know, or yeah. look at The Sopranos. And and you've mentioned The Underbelly. Uh, in particular, season one was fantastic. Um, so you have to have a point of difference. And well, the point of difference is here is, is taking up the um, you know, taking up the, the local surroundings and, you know, and, and in this particular series, the local, you know, nature, so to speak. So, you know, instead of the, the um, you know, stereotypical, you know, um, pin, pinstripe, street, uh, pinstripe suits and um, a, a 45 Magnum hmm. point of taking off a head, you know, we've, we've taken another stream where, you know, we're able to, um, you know, use use the local uh, Australian nature and use jellyfish in this particular particular um, scene. And in fact, you know, it, it's also kind of, um, you, you know, in a sense where it doesn't come back to the family. This particular person dies of natural causes, and obviously, he's illiterate too because uh, he didn't read the warning signs. <laughs> 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 um, look, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to the series in a moment, but uh, I want to pause and, and talk about you for a moment. Um, I guess tell us about like where you grew up and your your background and family. I, I believe also your your father passed away when you were you young. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, um, I grew up in Cairns and in in, 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 the, in the Torres Straits as well, and. Uh, right. You know, Dad passed away when I was extremely young, but you know that's no different to you know uh, my story isn't any different to most other Australians um, growing yeah. up in, um, in in a single parent um, you know family structure. But mm-hmm. however, you know I was you know fortunate where um, my grandmother, you know, extended family kind of um, were able to su- have that you know support my mother um, during that time and. Um, you know, um, basically, you know, I'm just fortunate and uh, blessed that I was, you know, raised in a really, really good and supportive family. Um, and, you know, my, my story um, is no different to, you know, the other bloke up the road. Um, so I just basically, um, you know, mm. was driven and... and uh, and was you know these these kind of um, you know my mother um, always instilled into myself and, and my brothers that um, you know uh, regardless of you know what you don't have but what you do have is you know the opportunities to be whatever you want to be you know mm. uh, it's up it's up to you to get up your backside and, and apply yourself and you know we were given that support through our family and through our mother and our grandmother and, you know, instilled with, you know, good family values and, and good morals and, and the belief that, um, you know, anything was possible, you know. In an, in an interview I read about you, you mentioned you grew up with uh, strong island values. What, what, what does it mean to have strong island values, you know, as opposed to just strong values? Well, you know, um, you know, culturally, um, you know, uh, it, it Growing up a bit strong island values, you know, in terms of your 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 own your knowledge of your own family structure, mm. your own, also the knowledge of um, your extended extended family structure, and where you're placed in amongst all of that, and then you know your knowledge of um, which has been passed on to you um, by the way of you know your knowledge of your totem. Um, and as I've said, your status within the family is extremely important. It, it, it just reinforces your identity, um, you know, knowing your history from when, where you came and, and you know, who you are. Um, and, you know, that also kind of provides a somewhat of a, a roadmap, I believe, um, to where you could possibly end up in terms of, you know, Knowing your your history and your past and your identity, it, it only re- reinforces or enforces, um, you know, confidence and and, and identity. Mm. And you know, a lot of you know in today's society, there is a lot of lack of identity, a lack of and a lack of 
confidence and self-esteem. Thus, mm. youths, um, you know, uh, you know, you know, the problems that we have and the social issues that we have with youths today is, you know, um, somewhat, you know, so much different in comparison to what, you know, the the issues were 20 years ago. And you know, that's and that's also, you know. The world is a much smaller place now with with the introduction of the internet and facebook and and all these other you know new beautiful ways of um technology is able to um you know has saturated you know society mm. so to speak but having that those, those strong island values and strong moral values and 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 good you know good upbringing only um basically you know is is responsible to, uh, and, and and has been, you know, uh, of the foundation which I've built, you know, my life, and and is responsible to where I am today. I believe in uh, career and personally. Mm. Look, I, I could point out some of the big big name shows you were in, like Sea Patrol and City Homicide. But uh, one role you were involved in um, really had me intrigued. It was a um, it was a radio play you did, I, be- I believe, called Casa for Yarn, if I, if I have the pronunciation correct. Um, tell yeah. us about the, about the about the story of Billy and why you decided to be involved in in this project because it's a little different. Yeah, well, basically, um, prior to um, being cut up catapulted into the industry through my experience or my first role, my initial role actually in the industry uh, through the SBS network production, Remote Area Nurse. Mm -hmm. Um, Prior to, um, you know, being introduced to the film and television industry, I was uh, a health worker for Queensland Health. And, um, and, you know, um, the health issues that uh, we as Indigenous people um, face uh, are absolutely diabolical. Um, you know, we, we lead the statistics in diabetes, you know, um, heart disease, um, and our, you know, mortality rate is much lower than, uh, much lower than, you know, mainstream society. Mm. So I guess when this this opportunity was um, was uh, I guess this opportunity presented itself, I was more than happy to to assist. And basically, it was it was just a, it was a radio play, um, you know, with the basis of giving um, health a uh, health message on um, Billy's character. Basically, uh, has uh, contracted HIV. And whilst in, in uh, live, whilst he was living in the southern parts uh, on, on the mainland, and has returned uh, back to uh, um, Thursday Island, and and I guess it's all you know for him. It, uh, he he's returning from being a, being away for such a long time and hadn't been in contact through you know his own kind of um, means of grappling with. The fact that he he has to you know tell this news or relay mm. this particular news to his family. So, and at, the, at that point of time, his family is you know going through their own um, you know dilemmas um, back on the island with the tombstone ceremony, his mother's tombstone ceremony um, coming up, and the father and father you know trying to organise that along with his extended family as well with Billy's siblings. Uh, and his sister being um, now of an age where she is being found attractive to, mm. you know, the other boys around town. So it's all of those kind of dynamics and dilemmas. Mm. And, and it was just great to be a part of it and, you know, being able to, you know, um, kind of produce and create and devise a production that was true to the heart of what most of these teenagers we're now facing up on the islands, um, and with the introduction, like you've said, with the with with the mobile phone, with the technology, and you know how everything is, how you know somewhat the the new generation, how how lives have changed now um, mm. due to the introduction um, to technology um, in the islands. So yeah, um, it was basically a no-brainer for me um, to to. Uh, when when this opportunity was presented, um, to basically give back uh, in in my way, give back to uh, 
something that was beneficial, I felt, um, for, for the younger generation, for the youth. And to tell a story that, tell, talk about, actually talk about sexual health, um, which is somewhat, um, a, somewhat a, was looked at um, as taboo, um, you know, especially sp uh, speaking about, you know, sexual health education openly um, in remote communities, mm. indigenous communities, that is, that is yeah. It's um, uh, very obvious you're quite a passionate person about Torres Strait Islanders um, and, and its culture. Um, this has been spilled into your acting choices. I also believed you're um, involved in, in writing and directing. What, what sort of things are you writing about? Oh, look, um, it was um, basically I'd seen a series of short Indigenous films being, um, I think, at, back in oh, 2005, it was uh, a series of short indigenous short films um, that were done for, either for the ABC or SBS, and, um, and I was basically just intrigued and wanted to know, you know, that how to make a short film, and I inquired with um, my colleagues, Kenny Chapman and Helen Prankers, and they in turn introduced me to Sally Riley at the Indigenous, uh, well, at then, at that, back then, Sally Riley was still, still the head of the Indigenous unit over at Screen Australia, and um, and I spoke about um, you know my interest in um, you know writing and directing um, or making a short film, and I just wanted to know what the mechanics were, and and I was just fortunate at that time that they were about to launch an initiative um, in partnership with SBS, the SBS Net Network. Uh, uh, to develop a series, another series of, of short films, which is uh, uh, called a bit of back business, and um, they are basically doing a do a cold call out to you know interested Indigenous writers who and directors who wanted to you know make their own short film, and they're doing a call out nationally. Mm. And I uh, basically you know got to work, and uh, my particular story was about um, the 51st Charlie Company, or 50, uh, 51st Battalion um, Charlie Company, um, who uh, the reserve um, of the Reserve Army uh, unit uh, up in the uh, up in the Northern Peninsula area in in, uh, in the Torres Straits, and basically it was inspired on a, on a on a true story that was related to me a few year, of years ago, actually. Um, mm. That uh, because I've got a lot, you know, a lot of my uncles uh, and relatives were involved in, in the unit at that time, and um, and also, you know, um, you know, it's basically uh, the untold story of World, World War Two, when um, you know of our of our involvement of uh, you know 900 um, men of the Torres Strait it volunteered. Um, to right. be a part of the uh, light infantry, Torres Strait Light Infantry Brigade. Mm. So anyway, this this story, which is related to me, uh, was uh, an exercise that took place back in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, between um, an army exercise between the uh, local Charlie Company boys and um, the SAS. Um, and cut a long story short, it, the um, through the use of local knowledge and the landscape, and 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 through you know, using um, only um, the island language being spoken uh, over the, the radio comms, uh, they were able to, um, yeah, defeat the SAS and win. And, uh, which is, you know, quite mm. uncommon because, you know, our own uh, Australian SAS are regarded as, you know, the, the world's elite. So uh, that was a kind of a, a story that I wanted to, to tell. and. Um, I was fortunate and that my story was got up and mm. uh, we were able to shoot it back up home in the Torres Strait. So it's basically, you know, um, telling these stories that, you know, the rest of the, the world um, and, you know, showing this region that the rest of the world hasn't seen before as well. Um, look, I can't do an interview without uh, mentioning two significant roles, though. The first one you mentioned um, earlier, um, your television debut in the uh, acclaimed SBS drama REN, Remote Area Nurse. Tell us about your memories of that show. Oh, mate. Um, it was 
it was just absolutely fantastic. I, you know, not only had I secured um, a lead role, but it was quite a quite a major role uh, when you look, look back look back on it and look back on the series. Even though it was only over two episodes, um, it, it was a quite a significant role. And um, look, it was uh, yeah, it was just fantastic to be able to um, for 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 once um, our part of the world, being that the Torres Strait Islands, being able to be showcased, and also the talent was able to be exposed from that part of the region. And to be a part of the initial project that was to open up this world was, you know, I mean, still to this day, I mean, it's, I'm still um, extremely proud of, of of my involvement. And, you know, and, you know, you look back on that series, it still holds up, you know, years, years down the track. Yeah. Um, and it was basically um, the... The start of, you know, um, it was the initial stage or the embryonic stage of um, my involvement, um, you know, into, into this industry. And, um, you know, it, it was, it, it exposed the beauty of the place and, you know, um, and it also stimulated and generated the ideas to tell or have, you know, to tell further stories from this area. Mm. Uh, it proved that people wanted, you know, from that production, remote area nurse, it proved that people wanted to hook in and have a look, to check out this world because people were just blown away that it was actually part of Australia. Yeah. Um, so it also, you know, generated interest um, and, for, you know, hopefully or generated the, the opportunity or the potential to tell further stories here. Hence now, We've got, you know, the straights, um, mm. and that was, you know, and that came. That's basically that came out of, um, you know, remote area nurse um, mm. because without that production, um, we wouldn't be here having this conversation right now. It pro it also proved that to the industry that we could tell productions up, to, uh, we could take productions up there. It also proved that you know um, that we could do it. I mean, you know, the way that ran was shot was and the way it was done it was it was so unorthodox in terms of its its approach but it was done it was you know you could do it it wasn't a matter of you know because there was so many obstacles that Penny and Helen had to maneuver through um, to get to, to to the stage of principal production but it proved all 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 those that that were you know saying that it couldn't be done. Well, actually, Penn and Helen went, went ahead and proved that it could be done. And what and what they found out from that as well is that, um, you know, I think um, through quite naively and unintentionally, um, I, I, I think Penn, Penny and Helen and, and the rest of the industry um, uh, quite naively thought that, you know, Aboriginals, would be able to play Torres Strait Island roles because at that time, I mean, you know, and still to this day, there is not many of us out there in the mainstream you know, or, mm. or actors. So I think once they were kind of faced to the fact that, no, they had to cast with unknowns and not cast the likes of Deborah Mailman and Aaron Pedersen and Ernie Dingo as Torres mm. Strait Islands, which was, you know, would be totally, you know, inappropriate. Um, mm. culturally um, so it also opened up other doors for you know non-actors or people from non-technical backgrounds to be given the opportunity and to prove to the industry as well that you know in some circumstances I'm not saying all circumstances but in some mm. circumstances that if you get the casting right that you can find, you know, little pots of gold in terms of unexperienced actors um, that may be able to be able to fulfil roles, lead roles, and you know, at the end of the day, who better not, who better to fill fill them at that particular time? And you know, I, I want to stress that you know, in really, really, I mean, this was a really isolated um, um, experience as well, um, mm. and I and. And I 
isolating example as well to be able to get Torres Strait Island people to play Torres Strait Island characters um, in a Torres Strait Island world. I mean, you know, it just comes naturally. Mm. So, you know, there was, there was, I think, at the end of those 22 uh, lead or, you know, key roles that um, non, uh, non-trained non actors played in that particular series. And we won bloody best series for that particular year uh, at the mm. AFI. So, you know, the runs are on the board, mate. You know, it's all there. But the ex- extremely, you know, ex- I'm extremely fond of, of, you know, that Ram has a special place and will always have a special place in my heart um, because it was my first ever experience. And, you know, what what better um, experience to have just to, to play your own culture and portray your own culture. And be the first, and be the first one to do it. Mm. Look, it's um. I know you don't do those kind of series for j- just for accol- accolades, but it is uh, nice to see that the industry and and the people are respecting you for those roles. As you mentioned, uh, nomination for an AFI and um, a nomination for a Logie as well. Um, so you know that that's really great. Um, your your, I guess your your next major role um was a definite fan favourite, uh, Sunny Koa. Uh, Detective in East West 101. Now, you, you went in the first season from memory. Um, you, you joined in season two. Uh, what, 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 what was it like working on the show? Um, there were was, was some elite Australian actors in that one. What, what did you learn? Yeah, well, you know, my first season uh, with East West, I mean, wow. I mean, now I was actually in amongst it all. I mean, this, mm. was, and this, and, and this was going to be the proof. I mean, this was going, going to be the moment of truth now, whether I could actually go with you know, if this was going to be my chosen path, could I do it? And could I go go with, you know, some of the best established Australian actors in the country? Because, mm. you know, I, I got an opportunity to, you know, in the first season, work with uh, William McInnes and also, um, again, have the pleasure again to work with Susie Porter. But you, know, you, you throw, you know, the Napman and Wild television production into the mix and, you know, their work mm. speaks for themselves. Of it's course. Just, you know, they're creators of high-quality drama and, and they've just been... Every production that they've produced has been critically acclaimed. Mm. You know, so... Um, mate, at the end of the day... It, it, and this particular series was so fast, the schedule was so grueling, um, mm. and basically, you know, the work on the street was, you know, if, if, if you can do an East-West one-on-one, you can do anything in this industry because of because of the turnaround factor, because of the we were shot so fast, working with the likes of Andrew, Peter Andrikides, um, if not be, be one of the best or if not the best um, director when it comes to that particular genre uh, in the country and the most sought-after director, um, you know, what did I learn? You know, is the question. Um, uh-huh. I learned everything from you know, uh, you know, observing the the other actors and working with them, the likes of you know, Daniel von Farinacci, you know, the irrepressible Don Hanny, you oh, know, yeah. the the you know, and you know, the seasoned stalwart in Susie Porter. I mean, uh-huh. whatever she touches turns to gold. Yeah. William McGinnis, you know, William McGinnis is absolutely fantastic. Um, and then, you know, you throw in the other guest, guest, uh, artist that was, guest artist that, or guest actors that came in on that first season. And, you know, throughout that, the whole three seasons, from season one, season two, season three, you know, through that exposure of working in the high quality drama, um, environment, and the scripts were just absolutely fantastic. I mean, I learned in so many different ways in terms of, you know, com- in comparison to, you know, working on such a fantastic script mm. and around su- such fantastic crew, su- such fantastic, um, uh, you know, film and television practitioner, the practitioners and also actors that my growth was basically in the industry was fast tracked in the end, mm. at the end of the day because you you're working around you're working with just high 
high quality people, and that, yeah. that has to have an effect on on you personally, and your and and you're wanting to to strive and because you know where the bar is set, and mm. um, so you're continually want, want wanting to, to to have work, or if you're developing work, I mean you you you're affected, and you and, and you know what a great what a great um, you know ex- exposure to this mm. industry and what a great experience that you know my my initial years in this industry has been with the best I believe you know whether you look at remote area nurse and then you look at the experience with um, East West 101 mm. I mean it, it's just and now with the straights yeah you know, um, I, I've been extremely blessed, and I've been just really fortunate um, that I've been able to be surrounded with these really, really talented movers and shakers mm. in the film and television industry. Extremely blessed, and you know, um, you know, I, I I made a conscious decision when entering into the industry that, you know, I, I did inquire about going to acting school, and. Uh, and it was a decision that you know Jimmy Barney and I, um, who played who played my brother in in Remote Area Nurse, and also he played my brother again, <laughs> get reunited again in um in, in the straight. Straight, yeah. But it was, it, it was a decision that we made back in Rand that we this is something that we wanted to pursue because we were so affected by it. We we, we loved it so much that we you know wanted to do more of the, more of these things, and more of you know do more of these you know just to be pursue this particular career path. Mm. So, you know, so we decided to inquire with the various um, acting schools around the, uh, the country and, you know, we were assisted by uh, Penny Chapman and um, who made a, a, a couple of show reels for us to send off to these acting schools. And basically, we auditioned and, and we got into... The three that we auditioned for and applied for were, were QUT, Whopper, and NIDA. And we got into we got into all three. And um, in the end, Susie Porter was in, instrumental to uh, introduce me to her agent at the time, who RGM, who I'm still with and still represented by. And on the on the post ran, um, they decided to have a meeting with me, and I flew down to Sydney and uh, basically made the decision to move down and pursue this career and Jimmy in turn went to Whopper and um, you know I was so fortunate that you know to land East West 101 which basically exposed me to such a great introduction to um, a learning introduction and learning experience mm. and, it, and basically was, I just got thrown, thrown straight in the deep end um, with such high quality drama that, you know, what more could have you asked for? Jimmy in turn went to Whopper um, and graduated and now is, you know, apparently, you know, well, not apparently, he is being touted as, you know, the next rising rising star in, in, or the next rising talent in this industry. Um, yeah. You know, be that theatre and, you know, he, he, you know, straight out of Whopper, he's straight into, you know, he's been, he's been doing stuff for Sydney Theatre Company, Belva, Malthouse, you know, he's worked at Malthouse Theatre, he's worked for the Black Swan. I mean, this this guy has just hit, 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 hit the, hit the uh, you know, runway running, basically. Um, sure. After his graduation and and, and he's casted in, in, in the straights, his first major television production since remote area days. And then you get straight, you know, then cast into the Marbo production for mm-hmm. ABC as well. So look, it's just fantastic to see, you know, where we've all, um, you know, in terms of, you know, where we where we've come and how far we've come in a short space of time. Um, but look, it, look, in regards to East West One Hundred and One, I, I couldn't have asked, asked for just a better introduction into the industry and. And to be around really, really talented people, and that just rubs off on you, and uh, and it inspires you, and um, you know now, you know to be acknowledged with an actor nomination um, is that absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah, no, it's been great. It's, it's mm. been really great. 
There's, um, I, I guess, so many things we can talk to you about, including the film Subdivision with Gary Sweet and Steve Bisley, oh. Brooks Satchwell. There's also um, your, your sellout play back home, your rugby league playing, how, how you keep in shape so well, and um, I, I guess we could be here for hours. But um, So I, I'm just thinking, I'll, I'll ask you about your future, the, the choices you make, whether in past occupations like your sexual health worker role or your acting choices and, and your writing that make for better understanding for Torres Strait Islander culture all seems to be sort of heading somewhere. So I guess when you passed from this world, what, what sort of impact do you hope you, you would have made? Mate, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, look, I just want to be able to, um, you know, create um, further opportunity um, for, for more and more um, talented uh, practitioners or potential uh, um, future artists to be able to, you know, um, have, a, have a pathway yeah. into this industry and have an opportunity to tell their stories, whether it's through my production company, um, with Penny and Helen, Pixie House and Matchbox. Yep. Or that they're inspired to start up and develop their own production companies. But to be able to be, be given that inspiration or to give that inspiration that, yes, you can do it too, that you're able to tell your own stories, that you, you like me, you know, can can work in this industry, can mm. have a place in this industry as well. And to be able to, you know, rip the door off this industry and just say the opportunity is here. Mm. And, uh, you know, to be able to inspire, you know, future actor, actresses, storytellers, directors, producers, writers from the Torres Straits, from far north Queensland, to tell their to tell their stories um, and to be given a voice, basically, or to give their people, give their give their world, give their area, um, give their culture a voice, a, a voice to tell their stories. And you know, the industry is coming is is, is coming, you know, is moving in, in in such a rate where you've got all these other in, in indigenous practitioners with who are, who are inspiring examples. Like the likes of Warwick Thornton, you know, Rachel Perkins, Wayne Blair, Richard Franklin, mm. um, Ivan Sin, you know. Um, so there are, and there there is a new wave of, you know, there there is another wave of Indigenous artists due to, you know, the, the inspiration from the likes that I've mentioned. But you know, they they were in, inspired by by the likes of Bob Mazza, you know, David Gulpilil, Justin mm. Saunders. So there is a movement that, that, that you know, and, and I guess, you know, the more and more, you know, um, artists that come through the industry, the more examples or the more, the more inspiring examples that we have to look upon or look to, the more that the flow um, will, will become more, more evident and more, more, more abundant, more abundance, I, I, I believe. So, you know, after I leave here, I, I hope that you know I've been a part of that and been able to assist um, more and more, uh, or more indigenous practitioners, in particular from the Torres Strait, um, to uh, tell their stories and to be able to give it to to be able to uh, um, enlighten them in, in the in the pathway that that they, that I've made for myself and that they can follow in as well. Um, look, before before we head back, uh, just uh, last couple of questions about the streets. I was just going to go for a light question now about, um, I heard that you, you turned down a, a knockback a role in Underbelly. Is, is that is that actually correct? Yeah, look, um, they, uh, you know, um... How many people do that? Yeah, well, you know, um, the role was quite insignificant and, uh, you know, um, and I, I believe that I could have brought something to the table in regards to that particular role that was was on offer, and um, you know, and it, it was just a 
decision that I made um, personally and, and professionally that, um, you know, I felt that what I could offer in, in, in regards to, um, you know, you've got you've got an actor that can actually do something, that, that can go with this role. Mm. Um, but, you know, they they made their decision to, to not engage or, you know, further develop that particular role. And, you know, in turn, it was, you know, I mean, it was quite, it was nothing snobbish in it or, you know, nothing, you know, there was no, it was basically just made on the fact, well, I can't, well, um, I chose not to, not to um, be, be, be a part of that. But in saying that, um, I, I eventually um, came to the, you know, screen time, screen time offered a, a, a role uh, for the upcoming uh, Brothers in Arms, Vikey, uh, Vikey role, and um, you know, and it was a good role. So, and I said mm. yes. So, uh, at the end of the day, there was, you know, there was no bad, bad, bad blood or there was anything snobbish in, in, in me knocking back the role. It was just, well, I just felt, well, okay, then well, you can go to someone else, but not me. <laughs> fair enough. And, uh, yeah, fair enough. And um, you know, uh, so yeah, I think sometimes you know, um, we should. You know, as practitioners, make, make those. Um, you know, and we can make make that, those decisions as well. Um, you know, you have to say yes to every role, um, and just because you know of, of the success of Underbelly, I mean, um, and if the, if the role, I felt, or if, I felt at the time wasn't um, wasn't going to do anything for me. Well, I've, I've I decided uh, at the end of the day not to not to partake or participate in that particular production, and you know, but now, it, but then, it, then you know, in turn, it came around again. So I was able able to uh, work with screen time, and you know, it was absolutely fantastic to be um, to be on the Brothers in Arms uh, production. You know, so to, to tell a, such an iconic story and be a part of an iconic story, um, you know, of, of of Australian folk tale. Well. Um... But, I mean, before you leave us, tell us. Uh, we'll go back to the straights as as we wrap up. Um, tell us about your a little bit more about your character, Noel. Look, I'd I'd sum him up as as being hot headed and an act before he thinks kind of guy, very ambitious and certainly not a daddy's boy. Um, how, how do you see him? Yeah, it's um, you know you put it all there. Um, pretty much you know fearless, ambitious. Um, and you know he's, this this guy's born to lead. You know. But unfortunately, um, he has somewhat of a knee-jerk reaction, doesn't he? So, uh, yeah. you know, he'll he'll act upon how he feels, and you know, the consequences he'll deal with later. Um, but uh, but look, I think Noel is quite conflicted, as you find as you find it moving on through the through the series. Noel is quite conflicted um, in terms of you know when it comes to loyalty because. You know his loyalty is is not only his strength but is also his weakness and right. his loyalty for his family, that being his mother and father in the family business, just against the loyalty for his wife and his children because he's he's uh, a str- as where we picked Noel up at the start of the series, um, he's him and his wife Antoinette, his wife Antoinette are. Uh, no and internet are separated. Mm. And internet, you know, basically had enough of playing six, second fiddle. And um, so, you know, Noel is throughout the series um, continually conflicted uh, in regards to where his loyalties stand because as much as he wants to be a husband and, and, and father, um, you know, regardless of how his father sees him as having this um, hot-headed nature and not being able to think think first in 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 in, in particular circumstances that arise. He, however, is you know the one that you make the phone call to when everything goes to shit. Mm. <laughs> So he's the guy that you're going to call 
when it all goes to shit, then you, he, someone has to come in and, you know, pop some knees, break some heads. But, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, um, you know he's, in, he's continually going to catch 22 situation. He's damned if he's, he, he does, he's, or, or, or damned, damned if he doesn't, you know? Mm. Damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. So he's in a, in a, in a you find him in, in a quite as as the as the series moves along. You find that he he is in a quite an interesting position and dilemma. So um, and you know it was fantastic to um, you know it was absolutely challenging and uh, one of the most challenging roles that I've played, um, mm. even though I created it for myself. <laughs> yeah. But you know you you wanted to you know. You, I I wanted to play, you know, um, because I've I've been for the last couple of you know since my introduction into the industry, I've been fortunate to play characters that have been a voice of reason, you know, really, you know, characters that have been cool, calm, and collected. Mm. So it was great to, you know, be able to develop a role that was so, you know, because Noel's quite a complex character. Um, given his, as, as you find it through his, through his journey through the series and, and the situations that he's, and his decisions that that he's faced with, um, he, he's a quite complex character. As are all the characters, and his trajectory is, is quite interesting as well. So, um, you know, where you start out isn't particularly um, the same place as where you're going to end up or find where Noel is, and. Um, you know, and it was always, um, you know, it was always, in my view, the thing, and all, and as well as, you know, my colleagues, Penny Chapman and Helen Pankhurst, is to develop, you know, these characters that were so complex, you know, in so many different ways. And, you know, as, as you know, basically as we are as, as, as people facing our day-to-day grind in our, and what we're faced with, Mm. Characters, you know, these characters need to be able to relate to the audience. The audience need to be able to feel for these characters. They need to be. They, the, the audience needs need to invest in these characters. Mm. You know, these characters need to be, you know, three dimensional, three dimensional characters with a lot of different layers, and 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 that's to the, the the story and the twist. So, you know, that was very important, extremely important in, in developing the series and having a clear, having that clarity of each and every character and, and, and their journey and, um, you know, and, and how the different dilemmas that they all face with, with and the decisions mm. um, that, you know, the audience members will rel- in their own way, relate to the individual characters and yeah. in their own way. So, you know, Noel, at the end of the day, you know, born elite, ambitious, hot-headed, um, but, you know, he does have, um, you know, he, he comes to a point in the series where, you know, he has to, he knows he has to make a change and um, a change where, you know, some people will be extremely happy and some people won't be happy <laughs> yeah i'm on a, actually writing a review of the series just at the moment i might pinch one of the quotes that you just said there about um just sort of describing the character he's the guy that you call when you're in the shit that's a lovely quote there i could could, could use that quite nicely um yeah well you know he's the guy that you know when you're down well, when, you, when you're when you're in the trenches you know he's yep. the guy that you want right beside you <laughs> uh, second last question, a, a quick one. There is the series only made for a, for a ten part series, or is it open for a, for a possible second season? Yeah, well, look, it's open for a possible second season, and you know, it it all, Aaron. Well, you know, it all comes back down to a numbers game now. Like uh, we've done all we can uh, to deliver, and um, now it's up to the power of the audience and uh, who tunes in. And um, and if we get the the numbers that uh, that that is required to that is required to um, you know kick off a, a second season, um, 
you know, so be it. But there's a lot of scope there for uh, a lot of scope, a lot of material there for. You know, we could do this, you know, for seven seasons if we wanted to. But um, mm. but uh, it all comes back down to um, your almighty audience um, numbers and members, and uh, it comes back down to the almighty ratings. So yeah, but to answer your question, definitely, there's definitely scope and there's definitely material there for a second season. All right. Um, final question. Um, you've um, had some very considered parts, such as East West 101, uh, Remote Area Nurse, The Straits, and the other parts you've been uh, passionate about, such as the radio play on the, on the life of Billy with HIV, which we talked about before. Just wondering, are these carefully considered roles for, for, for personal reasons, and you perhaps think you'd be selling yourself out by starring in something like Neighbours, or, or has it just been that the, these roles you've taken are the ones that have come along? Um, well, look, I've just been, look, to tell you the truth, Aaron, I've never been offered Neighbours, and I've never been offered Home and Away, um, for whatever, whatever, for whatever, for whatever reasons, um, but the role being, uh, you know, initially when I, um, came into the industry, I found very quick, found very quickly that, uh, the roles for Indigenous artists or actors were very far and few between. Yeah. So, hence that inspired me to, you know, that was also the catalyst to to explore the notion of or explore into film and writing making and direction mm. to explore those other facets of production um, to explore, you know, creating um, a company to develop further further productions. Mm. So in regards to, you know, the roles um, that I've played or been fortunate and blessed to play thus far, did they just come in a way that I believe that they've been presented because um, I was obviously in the right place at the right time. Right. Um, but in saying that, um, I think um, one has to be, you know, um, one has to be, uh, you know, diligent in choosing um, a particular role or, or roles, you know, and, you, and you've got to believe in the production too. I believe. I mean, for me, I can only speak for myself. I mean, I've, I've got to believe in a character. I've got to believe in a production. I've got to believe in that world, and um, and, and I've got to have somewhat of a relationship or with that internally uh, for me. And the roles that um, um, that I've been, you know, fortunate to play um, have been somewhat um, played on different experiences that I've had. Uh, mm. Throughout my life, so um, they've been they've come in way of you know I've, I've, they've just I've just been blessed that, that I've been fortunate that those particular producers at the time mm. and casting directors have, uh, have I've been fortunate to to come come in contact with um, and at that at, at the end of the day um, you know I think I've just come into the come into the industry at the right time because mm. uh, at a time where, you know, the, the, there is a changing face um, in the in the industry occurring um, and, you know, we are, you know, Australian television um, is starting, starting to, it's starting to reflect um the Australian society that exists currently, you know, mm. starting to starting to reflect those stories that exist, starting to to to, to reflect the day to day, um, you know, the day to day grind of the Australian society, um, you know, that being of, you know, the different cultures and the, the, the diversity of the Australian culture and what makes up the Australian society today. I mean, you're always going to have your neighbours. And your home and away. There, 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 there is always going to be a place for those particular programs. Um, mm. 
and it's fantastic that you know, I mean, I'm a great supporter of, of the Australian in, industry and, and and you know local content. Content. I'm a great supporter of that. Mm. I mean, more and more, the, the more and more Australian content and, and, and local stories, or local domestic stories are being generated, the more op- opportunity that we have as practitioners to en- to to engage in these productions and or opportunities to engage. Mm. And the more and more local content that is being made, you know, um, the more you'll find the, there's, there's a great diverse array of stories that are being developed and being mm. told. And that just gives an opportunity for everybody. Uh, and, you know, cause, because when I, when I came into the industry, I mean, I think I came in, Back in 05, 06 was the lowest time in in the in the industry industry in the, in, in the industry because nothing was being made, yeah. nothing was being made at all. I mean, there was only, I believe, you know, neighbours home and away in All Saints mm. uh, and McLeod's daughters, I believe. There's only and there was nothing being made on the ABC, um, to my recollection. I may be wrong on that, but um, you know, it was. <laughs> You know, it was a terrible time to be an actor, and that that kind of kind of prodded me in, you know, in in my in thinking that you know, have I made a mistake here? Mm. <laughs> I'm yeah. just left to help. You know, I'm, I'm left a, a pretty good job with um, living in a in a rather extremely beautiful, you know, living conditions and and lifestyle, mm. tucked in the middle of the you know. Of the beast, so to speak, in the middle of Sydney, but that place will absolutely eat you up and spit you out so quick. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was I was fortunate that uh, you know things worked out. You know, things have worked out. But you know, you. But I was adamant that I wasn't going to leave Sydney until I was going to. Uh, well, Sydney was going to going to beat the hell out of me. I was going to. Uh, you know, stick to what I came down to do, and, and that was to you know, succeed in this industry and um, to be able to be heard. Um, and you know, um, you know, it's only still the early days, but I'm thankful for all the uh, opportunities and the people that I've met um, who have been responsible for where I am today. You know, there, there is mm. a lot of you know I haven't done this on my own. Um, there are a lot of people that I need to thank who are responsible in the industry and outside the industry as well, the support that I've, that I've received. And that's really important to mention as well. Mm. But, um, you know, the, 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 you know, I have some, you know, I have a great gratitude for the support that I've received in, in, within the industry, the circles of the industry. Mm. Um, and, um, and also the support that I've received, you know, from my family and from my friends and from my extended family. Um, so yeah, I've, I've I've been supported, you know, and uh, you know, and I haven't done this. I haven't done this alone, and um, and I and I and I don't do it just for my own personal gain as well, you know, um, because I think um, you know I'm not only I don't only have the obligations to my only my own family and my my children and. And to my wife, but I, you know, for where I am in my position in, in the industry, and you know, where where we are at this particular time, and where I am in this particular time, you know, I just have 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 an obligation to my own my own people too, and my own culture, and uh, and and that also the wider Australian culture as well. To you know, that I have a responsibility to portray these characters and to portray this world. And the culture correctly, mm. that there, there is no misconception as well. So you know that, so you know that that comes with responsibility as well. So I I, I acknowledge the responsibility that I have as a as a film and television practitioner as well. And that's not just as an actor, but also as a creative as well as a you know as a as aspiring producer. Mm. Yes. Well, um, certainly a very interesting and passionate guy. And as we as we watch the straits, we also look um with keen interest as to what's around the corner. Obviously, bikey wars, brother in arms coming up as well. So, um, thank you very much for joining me here at TV Central, Aaron. 
No worries, Aaron. I hope I haven't bored you too much. <laughs> no, no, very interesting stuff. No worries, champion, and um, thanks for your time as well. Aaron uh, Faso there from AB, the ABC One Series, The Straits. That kicks off with a two-hour premiere on Thursday, February the 2nd at 8.30pm. You can also catch it on Friday nights on ABC Two or at your leisure, of course, on iView. Certainly a meaningful chat there and great to have Aaron join us. Uh, that's all for this podcast. Thanks for joining me and look forward to your company for the next one. Until then, I'm Aaron Ryan for tvcentral.com.au. See you then.